Well, good morning, children, and welcome to Tabernacle Cardiff Sunday School. Now, let's begin our time together with a word of prayer. So let's make sure that we're sat nice and still, have our hands together, and let's pray. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that we can come to thee uh, in your name, uh, around thy words and around thy throne, to Sunday School. We thank thee and praise thee that thou art God, and that, Lord, we would ask and pray that you would come down uh, and dwell amongst us uh, during Sunday School. Lord, help us to understand what we hear, and, Lord, we ask that you will draw near to us wherever we are, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we'll uh, begin by singing our Sunday School prayer, uh, as we usually do every week, uh, which is Father in this place of worship. remind ourselves now what we looked at in Sunday School last week. For those of you uh, that were with us, uh, we con continued um, in our series with the Apostle Paul. Now, Paul met a man, didn't he, uh, last week. Uh, can you remember what his name was? That's right, his name was Felix. Now, Felix had a very important job. Um, could you remember exactly what job Felix had? That's right, he was, he was the Roman governor or, or a judge, wasn't he? He was in charge uh, of making um, uh, decisions with regards to prisoners, um, and of which Paul was one. So Paul was um, speaking with Felix and uh, Paul had the opportunity, didn't he, to uh, speak to Felix and to preach to him about the Lord Jesus Christ. And unfortunately um, for Felix, uh, he delayed, he put it off. He didn't think that now was the right time for him uh, to respond to the gospel. Um, so he said it was not a convenient um, time for him and that uh, when there was a season for him, that he would then come back to Paul. Now that taught us, didn't it, that we mustn't delay. We must not delay uh, going to the Saviour and coming to the Saviour, um, our Lord Jesus Christ. So let's remind ourselves um, of the memory verse uh, that we looked at last week. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's in Galatians Chapter 6, verse 14. Uh, so we'll say that once more. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. Uh, let's see if we can say that now together. Um, without the words. God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 6 verse 14. Now let's just check to see uh, if we were correct. Now let's say it once more together. God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 6, 
verse 14. Well, we're going to uh, sing now, sing again, and we're going to sing uh, when we sang a few weeks ago. Um, but it is a favourite, I think, of some of the teachers as well as the, the children. Um, and it's this one. Jesus, the Saviour is of boys and girls. Uh, so we heard Paul, haven't we, preaching the gospel um, to men and women. Um, but the gospel is for everyone, isn't it? For boys and girls as well. None other ever could save boys and girls. Uh, the words will come up on the screen and we'll stand to sing. Jesus, the Saviour is of boys and girls. Well, it's time to turn to the Word of God now. So if you have your Bibles with you, could you turn with me, please, uh, to the uh, New Testament? Um, we're going to look at um, a new book, Philemon. Uh, we haven't looked at it before. We've mainly been in the Acts, haven't we? And um, the fifth book of the Bible. Um, we're going to be in chapter one. And there is only one chapter um, in, in the book of Philemon. Um, and I've got a bit of homework now for the older children. Um, by next week, um, if you could tell me um, all the books in the Bible that just have um, one chapter. Uh, you can write it at the bottom of your take-home sheets. I'll show you that later. Um, uh, I'll give you a clue. There are five in total. Uh, Philemon is one of them. Uh, so you just have to find the other four. Um, so let's get back to our Bible reading now. And it's in Philemon, uh, chapter 1, and we're going to read from verses 7 through to verse 11. So let us hear the word of God. For we have great joy and consolation in thy love, because the bowels of the saints are refreshed by thee, brother. Wherefore, though I might be much bold in Christ to enjoin thee, which is convenient, yet for love's sake I rather beseech thee, being such and one as Paul the aged, and now also a prisoner of Jesus Christ. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten in my bonds, which in time past was to thee unprofitable, but now profitable to thee and to me. And so reads the word of God. Well, let's come to our Heavenly Father now in prayer. Uh, so let's make sure that we're sat nice and still. Let's put our hands together and our eyes closed. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee uh, that once again, Lord, we can come to Thee in prayer. We thank You, Lord, that on this, uh, Your day, uh, Lord, we can be found here in Sunday School. Uh, Lord, ready to uh, worship uh, Thee and to sing Thy praises. Lord, we pray now for this lesson that we're about to hear. 
Lord, we pray that you might give us uh, concentrating minds, Lord. Uh, Lord, that you might give us ears to listen. And that, Lord, you might make our hearts able to understand what it is that we hear. Lord, be with us wherever we are and continue with us now. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, <clears throat> the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, before we come to today's lesson, we're going to sing again. Uh, and it's this one. It's a great hymn. Um, it is a thing most wonderful, almost too wonderful to be, that God's own Son should come from heaven and die to save a child like me. The words will come up on the screen uh, and we'll stand to sing It Is A Thing Most Wonderful. Well, it's now time for today's lesson, so let's make sure that we're sat nice and still and ready to listen. Hello everyone. It's lovely to be here with you for today's lesson, which is our last lesson in our series on the Apostle Paul. Today, we are going to learn about a man named Onesimus and what happened when he met Paul. Onesimus was a slave. Now, we do not agree with slavery, but people in Bible times had slaves. Onesimus lived in a town called Colossae, which is not far from Ephesus. Onesimus used to grumble a lot. Although he was a slave, he had a kind master called Philemon. Philemon treated all his slaves well they had food, a place to live, and they weren't overworked. Do you complain when your parents, carers, or teachers ask you to do something? Do you grump and think, 
I don't want to. Or do you think of all the things you'd rather be doing than what you've been told to do? Philemon had not always been a kind master. Philemon came to know the Lord Jesus as his saviour through the preaching of Paul. Philemon had seen that he was a sinner in God's eyes and had prayed for forgiveness. God had forgiven him and Philemon's life had changed dramatically. We do not know if Onesimus could remember the time before Philemon's conversion. Perhaps he didn't like the hymn singing and the Bible readings that now took place in the house since Philemon's conversion. The Bible tells us he was unprofitable or unhelpful. He had not worked as he should have. Onesimus became more and more dissatisfied and ungrateful. He began to dream of the world outside Philemon's home. He would dream of all the excitement and the pleasures that could be found. He would think, if only I was free. When I get my freedom, I will do this or I will do that. Then he made a plan. He started to steal money from his master Philemon. Then one night he ran away. He was now free, or so he thought. Onesimus had decided he would run away to the city of Rome. Now this wasn't going to be an easy journey for him. As a runaway slave, if he was caught, he was in great danger because he would face the most severe punishment. He would have to sleep in barns and hide in alleyways to avoid anyone seeing that he was an escaped slave. He may have tried to forget these difficulties and throw himself into all sorts of activities that he wanted to do. It's very likely that the money that he stole ran out very quickly. So then he would have had to have done some very unpleasant jobs or steal so he could eat. He could not have been happy. He had this constant worry of being caught. He may have tried to distract himself with all the many things there were to see in Rome, like the Colosseum where the great sporting events took place. This was the Rome that he had dreamt of. But again, when it came to finding somewhere to sleep in the city, the only place for him were the dirty parts of the city hidden away. He could now see the outside world for what it was. He had been so full of self-confidence before he left Philemon's home, but now he had been brought low. He had seen and felt the wickedness of the world and its people. He was truly miserable and his conscience weighed heavily upon him. We all have a conscience given to us by God, our creator. A conscience tells us right from wrong. So Onesimus was feeling bad about what he had done to his master Philemon. We are not told how Onesimus came to know Paul was in Rome. Perhaps he had heard where Paul was and went to see him in desperation. Remember, Paul was under house arrest and was being watched by a guard, but he was still able to see visitors. Paul showed Onesimus kindness and told him how God would forgive all his sins. Onesimus felt burdened or weighed down by his sin. Boys and girls, have you felt weighed down by your sin? He realised how wrong he had been to think that he could manage without God and the wickedness of robbing someone who had showed him kindness. 
Onesimus now saw the cross in a new way. He saw that the Lord Jesus had the power to wash away the worst sinner's sins and make them holy in his sight. Onesimus prayed and asked the Lord to forgive him. The great change of conversion took place. He was now free from this world. Onesimus visited Paul regularly. He liked to help Paul in any way he could. He had been totally changed. He no longer wanted to serve his own wants. Paul even went so far as to refer to Onesimus as a son. However, Although both Paul and Onesimus wanted Onesimus to stay in Rome, they both knew he had to return to Philemon. Paul wrote a letter to Philemon explaining what had happened to Onesimus. In the letter, Paul explained that he had left for a time, but he was coming back. Paul said that Onesimus had once been, unha been unhelpful but now he was helpful. He had broken the law, but Paul appealed for mercy. You can read the full letter in the Bible, in the book of Philemon. Onesimus headed back to Colossae with the letter from Paul. He was now happy to serve Philemon. He must have been nervous though about what Philemon would say to him, but he trusted the Lord and knew that it was the right thing to do. Have you ever broken something that wasn't yours? Say a toy or your mother's vase? I know I have, and you may have tried to hide it for a while as you couldn't bear to tell them what had happened. Or maybe you were worried about what they would say. But there comes a time where we have to face up to the fact that we have done wrong and we know we will be found out. We must say sorry as that's the right thing to do. In Psalm 139, it tells us how we cannot escape from God. We may try to fill our lives with things. We can find something for a little while to distract us, but it doesn't last. There's no end to the fads of this world. God's eye is upon us always, and he is there to help us if we would but turn to him. Do you know what it is to have such a great change within? Children, it is so important for us all to see the truth about the world and our sinfulness. You need to turn to the Lord Jesus and seek his forgiveness. To you older ones, are you afraid of the change of life or what your friends will say? But when you come to the Lord, you will think, why did I wait so long? Why did I hold back? To you little ones, you can turn to the Lord and ask for forgiveness. You're never too little to be saved. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And that was today's lesson at Tabernacle Cardiff uh, Sunday School. Let's have a look at this week's memory verse now. Uh, and it's this one, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's in Philemon chapter 1 verse 3. So that's grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Philemon chapter 1 verse 3. Well, this week's take-home sheets uh, are now available. 
and you're able to get those in one of two ways uh, either by clicking on the link in the description box uh, with this video uh, or by going to the church website www.tabernaclecardiff.org and there's a link there on the home page to the Sunday School uh, take-home sheets. So let's have a quick look at uh, this week's take-home sheets. Um, it's lesson 24, so make sure you have lesson 24 at the top uh, of your sheets. And uh, the infant's one uh, here is uh, Paul there uh, with uh, Onesimus, um, and that's the um, infant's one. And here's the uh, juniors and the teenagers uh, take-home sheet. Again, you can see number 24 up there, and you can see Paul uh, and Onesimus um, there. And uh, with regards to my uh, Bible challenge um, earlier, if you see down here, we've got a prayer you can write in there just above the date, um, the five books of the Bible um, that have one chapter in. So you can include that uh, on your take-home sheets uh, for this week. Um, to fill that in. So those uh, take-home sheets uh, are now uh, available uh, to download um, in one of two ways as mentioned before. Now it's time to have a look at your take-home sheets from last week. Well, it's uh, lovely to see your take-home sheets again this week um, and to see all the hard work that you put into those. Let's sing our closing uh, song together now. Um, and it's this one. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Well, it's been lovely to have you with us here today at Tabernacle Cardiff 
Sunday School. And I trust it's been a blessing for you too um, to be with us at Sunday School. Well, here's just a quick reminder as to what else is coming up on this, the Lord's Day on the Tabernacle Cardiff uh, YouTube channel. At 10.30 this morning will be our morning service. Um, at 3.30 this afternoon um, will be Kapla Raf, our Welsh service. And then at six o'clock this evening um, will be our evening service. Um, all are available uh, on the Tabernacle Cardiff um, YouTube channel every Sunday, God willing. Uh, and you are more than welcome to subscribe uh, and share this channel with your friends and family. Well, let's bring our time together now to a close. So let's um, come to our Heavenly Father in prayer. So let's uh, make sure that we're sat nice and still, have our hands together and our eyes closed. Gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, for, uh, Lord, everything you have done for us. But most of all, we thank you for your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, in dying on the cross of Calvary for our sins. Lord, we thank you for what we have learnt today. Lord, we pray that you might help us to take it into our hearts, Lord, and that, Lord, wherever we are, Lord, we would ask that you would keep us safe um, for this week, Lord, and bring us safely back to Sunday school next Lord's Day, God willing. Uh, draw near to us, Lord, in our um, situations. Lord, you know each one of us. And help us, we pray. For we ask all these things in our Saviour's name, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.